a whole. So, Actually, no, we're going to drop that. We'll bring it back uh, up once this match is done. Because first, we need to address the fact that we're going to have... Is this Sonic Fiend versus Jopon? Yes. yes. Two, one, All right, zero. Sonic versus Pikachu. Now, I know earlier on stream, there was it was Wii Fit versus Pikachu. And one thing about that matchup is that... Wii Fit really struggles to hit Pikachu. Very small frame, very tiny character, very zippy, zappy, zappy. Uh, Sonic doesn't really have that exact same problem. You know, most of Sonic's options are grounded, and so he's not going to struggle to hit Pikachu, at least a lot of the time, like a, a taller character would. Yeah, it's... Oh, and this matchup can be played in so many different tempos because both characters have such a great... Uh, utility tool set at controlling pace and controlling when not only they get to hit you, but when they get hit. That's why a stage like FD works so well for both of them that I'm not even surprised, I'm not even a little bit surprised that we're here to start game one. And it's just going to be a matter of who can who can build up offense first and thereby dictate the rest of the set. And it looks like Sonic Fiend is off to a strong start. Fantastic, just catching him with a down smash at the ledge. That's huge, because one thing... So, Jopon is definitely the type of Pikachu who's not... If he if he feels like he has to play slow, he will play slow. It's not his default play style, but he's able to turn on that switch when he needs to. And cleaning up that stock for him was huge, because otherwise, Sonic Fiend could have gotten a huge lead, and then you have to deal with Sonic with a lead, and that's just... It's, I don't think there's a single human being who's just like, Ah, yes, now I get to approach Sonic. Yeah, that's why, play, that's why the, honestly, the counterplay to Sonic is often ca uh, camping him just as much as he can camp you. Because Sonic is great at running away, but he's not especially great at running at you. And if Pikachu has a lead and tools like Thunder Jolt can start really making their full use, then Sonic Fiend is going to have to like force the initiative a little bit against a character that can... While Sonic may not have trouble hitting Pikachu, finding those kill moves is going to be still rather rough. Characters definitely. Kill moves are... That's going to be where everything breaks down. Because we did manage to see, like, a very early down smash at the ledge for Sonic Fiend, and then a very clean up throw uh, Thunder for Jopon. But outside of those setups, like, when these two characters are just in neutral... They don't have moves that are like, ah, oh, you messed up just a little bit. Now let me kill you at like 120. They don't have that. They can set up for kills. Oh, right. I, I like, say that. I'm I would like to introduce you to wrong. Pikachu dash attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While Sonic is very reliant on spin charge combos into things like fair and landing ball backers off of uh, proper speed setups, Pikachu, when he feels struggled, uh, can resort to dash attack, down smash, and up throw mode at varying percents and see how things work. I, I mean, just having those immediate burst kill options is what separates Pikachu in, from that upper echelon to Sonic, who's more in that high tier area. And we can kind of see the struggle. Like, even Sweet Spot Fair, mid stage, not taking at 150. And Pikachu can, can just quick attack all over the place with this massive uh, air, massive airspace thanks to FD and not get hit until, unless he wants to. A lot of these up airs at like mid range. And I think part of that's almost like a baiting tool because that up air has, it, it doesn't have end lag or the end lag on it is so slight that a lot of times he'll go for it then immediately a back air and the back air is what actually will catch. Uh, Sonic Fiend. So maybe some. Oh, that's huge. Okay, yeah, that that fantastic pickup on that stock. Great shield, able to just consistently get that forward tilt to, to clean up. But he's still down 98%, and <laughs> Joe Pone at a very very healthy six. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised that Joe Pone is pushing the initiative like he is. He's not trying to stop. He's not trying to stop his momentum in any regard and play. Uh, play to Sonic's weakness. He's rather playing to his own strengths, which are approaching with Tijol and making Sonic Fiend consider what to do about the rat and the electric jolt that are coming at him at the same time. The last stock of this game, because there's something very curious. It was a fantastic conversion off of the, uh, the Thunder Jolt for Joe Pone. But I wonder if he went for the up smash regardless of whether or not the... Uh, the T-Jolt would have connected because it seems I don't know if he would have been able to up smash on reaction for that. 
um, it was very quick. And so it could have just been like an option coverage thing. Right here. Uh, yeah, so he goes for this T-Jolt. I think he just jumped away here. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this was it. So he goes for this T-Jolt. And immediately up smashes. Like, that was immediate. I think maybe he was... Even if, like, because, like, even if Sonic... One of the things that Sonic Fiend was doing was jumping around the T-Jolts. And so even if he jumped around that T-Jolt, he could have gotten hit by that up smash. So that's... We were saying before how Sonic has a very grounded approach. And that means that T-Jolt, even if Sonic is dodging it, it's limiting him. He has to put himself in the exact positions that Joe Pone will already know about beforehand. So I think how Sonic Fiend plays around the T-Jolt maybe a little bit more effectively in this next game. As you see right there, he actually... Pulled back a little bit on that charge as Joe Pone was trying to intercept him with a forward air. So, already I think there are some good adjustments, but it's going to have to come together in a really, like, solid game plan. Otherwise, game one's just going to go the same way as game two. One of the things that, when watching a lot of the varying Sonic play, because there's plenty of them in the current metagame, when you separate the players like Sonics versus the players like, I don't know, You're Too Slow or Super Striker or like, uh, Blue Striker? Whatever his name is. Excuse, sorry. Um, Sonics has a dominating presence when he's in advantage, but he always plays to timeout. He plays patient, but he knows that he knows how and when to get damage and get stocks and how to extend that lead to the point where it feels insurmountable. Sonic Fiend is getting his damage where he can, but he's not pushing to the point where Joe Pone is, looks like he's at like an uncomfortable disadvantage. In fact, he's at a 40% lead now, and with the chance of a tech chase, which he calls him out promptly with that standing grab. Wow, is he dead? Okay, no. Pikachu is a very light <laughs> character, meaning that one solid read could do him in. But as you notice, in last game, um, Sonic Fiend was either killing Joe Pone off of a pretty hard read at like around 100%, or he was killing with like F tilt out of shield at 150. Okay. Consistency of kill power is going to be the name of the game for him. But right now, he's just trying to get more damage in. 43% onto Joe Pone, but a cl just cleans up that stock really nicely on the edge guard. And now we have one, two stocks apiece for each, uh, each player here. Oh no, he, you know what? Phenomenal DI. He decided to hold down there instead, which is arguably risky as Pikachu can read a DI down with a drag down Nair. But mixing up what happens after the second back air is huge because there's so many combo routes and so many edge guarding uh, opportunities that Pikachu gets at low when your opponent is at low percent after back air. But by mixing himself up, Sonic Fiend keeps himself alive and therefore keeps his lead alive, which, left, which is proving instrumental in this spin charge heavy game plan that he's kind of resorted to as, oh, I think that quick attack might have been a misinput. <laughs> And now 103%. Once again, a, like a good solid read with a smash attack is is would be great for Sonic Fiend. But besides that, he doesn't have too many options that will just outright kill. Uh, instead, it looks like he's going for this run-up shield game plan. Try and tack damage on more and more. But that's putting him in a bit of a risky spot. Already now, he's up to 89. Even if Sonic Fiend does take this stock first, it's not the super comfortable lead I think he was hoping for. That was adorable. <laughs> all right. That, that, that worked. Okay. He, he, was, he was doing all this careful run-up shield, and then he's just like, but what if I do the thing my opponent would never expect? But boy I mean, visual mix-ups, I guess. Arguably, it's it's something to go off of, and now Jopone is in that much more... Uh, disadvantageous spot being a stock down against Sonic where Sonic Fiend has been pretty consistently looking for these full hops from Joe Pone trying to stuff uh, the full hop t -Jolt and full hop aerials that are uh, really applying so much pressure and Sonic has the speed to catch up with that I mean look at look at the full hop up air that he did just to make sure that the quick attacks that Joe Pone are do uh, has been doing are never as safe as he wants them to be and Slowing the game down is promptly what you would think you need to do, but a phenomenal call out from Joe Pone trying to make this game as even as he can as even as he can make it as we get down to the final two and a half minutes of the game. 
Warhammer is, of course, a factor, especially if you're Sonic Fiend, because as the game drags on and you get to that point where you're like, ah, now I have to figure out how to kill the Pikachu. If the timer's low enough, you don't. That, like, if you really want to, you Simple can just play as patiently as you need to, and you just, you know, the, the timer will do the ultimate blow for you. And there, there is a slight difference between playing two timeout and playing four timeout, but it looks like it's not gonna mat. No, good DI coming out from Jopone. He's still got a, Angle. a that last leg. So oh. Would that pay off for him? Maybe. For the low holding attack. Oh, now all of a sudden, yeah, Jopone is back in this, and both of these players are in the red. A fantastic grab goes for that. It's again the down throw thunder, but. At no point a Sonic Team fell for it. One more. Like, at this point, there are definitely plenty of aerials that Sonic Team has available that will kill. It's just a matter of who gets that big hit. At this point, percent no longer matters. Pikachu has plenty of rage to where things that like should dash be attack it. will kill, but the grab scooping from so far. I think he extended his hurtbox just a little bit. Did he? Yeah, I think he went like for like a little bit of a, whether it was a jab or a grab, maybe, and he just extended it. A little bit forward. Yeah, we can get the replay on this because Devin is a, is a wonder. Yeah, did he go he for F here? tilt here? No. Oh, he no. Yeah, he just shielded. He just kind of went for a bit of a miss space on that, um, on the neutral air. And yeah, he went for shield. He dropped it at the last second, I think. Yeah, he remembered. It's like he shielded and then he remembered that like, oh, no, I'm at the ledge against Sonic. I cannot be shielding. And, uh, but it was too late. It was already too late. And yep. Did he so go for grab as well? Is yeah, it? I think he actually tried to grab himself. Shield I grab. Yeah, shield just... grab at frames away. That was like, that was actually like frames away from doing a, uh, like a grab yeah, trade. The grab, the grab's clanking. And, yeah. But shield grab natively slower than just a raw standing grab. So uh, he was at a native disadvantage. And back to FD we go. Jokun kind of figuring something out towards the latter half of that game. And I guess... What he was figuring out was, hey, I shouldn't fall behind too early. Getting hit by s Smash won't necessarily feed towards that game plan, but it's a game plan nonetheless. Let's see what we got here. King, is that when when you're when you're playing and you get what you think is the kill screen, and your opponent lives, and then they start making things work, you know, they start making the comeback happen, you get scared. You start to play more scared. Even though you were in the lead the entire game, you can already project to losing it. And that can make people play in a specific way. I'm not saying that Sonic Fiend was playing in that way, but like it definitely felt like Joe Pone was doing more aggressive things and that Sonic Fiend was like kind of getting hit by it. Oh, but right there. I don't know if he wanted maybe a second quick attack. He didn't get it, but maybe he was just going for a mix up. Oh, well, that's a mix up. Okay. Yeah. The ultimate yep. mix up. <laughs> Stop canceling. He's he's trying to make it even. No, but to play to, to play into that, it looks like Sonic Fiend has just been playing, in, and at least in the start of this game three, a lot more confident. I mean, it, he's been approaching ledge and actually staying there instead of trying to make blurs with Sonic's speed. Uh, he's been looking for a lot more of these up angled F smashes, trying to call out quick attack a whole lot more. I mean, granted, it's a whole lot harder to catch Pikachu sometimes thanks to his um, full screen presence. But at the same time, you don't have to worry about uh, you don't have to worry about Pikachu's offense if you play to not get hit. So it's gonna not get hit play style. Okay. He's Whoop. yeah. He he tries to you know he's always looking for an opportunity. Oh. And sometimes that might cost him. As we're seeing, he had the lead, and Joe Pone is at 92%. Another good F smash. Any kind of smash attack at all will probably do it. Joe Pone knowing that he's staying a little bit more grounded, but... Even still, look at the... I really like the patience between these two right now. Just throwing out tiny moves, not trying to commit too much. He gets the drag down neutral there, but it doesn't actually lead into anything. Man, and it really looks like Joe Pone's patience is going to wear thin first. Uh, he's always the one pushing, uh, trying to take center stage and trying to really push when Sonic Fiend is comfortable on edge. A lot of drag down nares after full hops, right? right you know what? Ask and you shall receive. 
it's the same thing. He's been going for that level of offense. Different moves on the full hop. Okay. Okay, SD. this is the mirror image of what we're seeing, right? Smash attack at the ledge, followed by SD. <laughs> you, know, you get your confirm, then your SD, and yeah. we'll make it a real fun did set. You, did you guys know this was actually a ditto going on? <laughs> Surprise. Not a, not, a not a character ditto, a player ditto. They're, they're the same Strange, person. Strange, isn't it? <laughs> You <laughs> no, not another one. <laughs> Please. I should get oh, the sound, sound bite. bite. Yeah, that thing. yeah. <laughs> coming, coming this Sunday, Fight Club. Oh my god, I love that movie for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> but back to the match, uh, Joe Pone Rude putting on, putting on his own pressure. To, now that he has a lead, despite that SD, uh, he can use T Jolts to their full effectiveness. Uh, Though getting crossed up by homing attack won't be doing too much for you. The ledge goes for a smash attack, but it's not enough end lag to actually get punished. He keeps Sonic Fiend at the ledge. Sonic Fiend still not able to get back. A dash attack, but beautiful DI keeping him alive, but he's already at 153 and still struggling to make it back even to center stage. An up air still not enough. But how is he going to actually get out of this terrible situation? Now that he's out of it, how is he going to do the next step, which is opening Dopo up to actually get something done himself? Sanfi looks like he's deciding, like, hey, I'm going to try and play the player and not the game here. But you can't always be comfortable when Pikachu runs in your face. His hitboxes are surprisingly disjointed and challenging homing attack when you... And when Jopone really didn't have much to lose at 61, P even Pikachu, as light as he is, isn't going to die. And that's that's going to wrap up this game three, giving Jopone Cope counterpick advantage, though, honestly, we're probably going to see We've been seeing FD game one, game two. I have a feeling that, yes, we're going to be seeing both these players like Final Destination. I mean, it could be that we might see a bit of a stage switch now that we're moving on to... Uh, is this winner's side or this is loser's side? This is winner's side. This is winner's. So now that we're on to like Sonic Fiend's winner's life here, he might choose a different stage that, you know, twice now battle, uh, FD has not worked out for him. But, you know, it is also just a very good stage for Sonic and comfort might bring him back once again. And it looks like that's what we are going to be seeing. And once more. Oh, but he gets the first hit this time. That's 15%. He can run away. He can time him out. <laughs> All right. And missing the deck, <laughs> missing two now. Okay, so Joko kind of throwing out some of these punishes, really trying to build a lead that's almost not even like much of a lead at all. Like it's, it's very, really the early stages of a game. You don't have to do too much, even if you are worried about Sonic Fiend running away from you for, I guess, six and a half more minutes. But we've got time. Both players are going to need to use that time if they're oh, going to try and take this. <laughs> so he was looking on the dash back to try and hit the sweet spot of Pikachu's S smash instead of just taking the damage, which could have killed given a Sonic's a lack of uh, lack of weight. But I well, I think he lived a sour spot forward smash at like a later percent from a little bit closer to the main stage earlier. I have a feeling he would have lived right there. And oh, the fact that Sonic Team lived really... Oh, never mind. Nobody lived. Nope. Everybody dies. Everyone is dead. I said the classic children's book. Everybody dies. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Not quite that much death, but giving me a bit of a heart attack there. But Joe Pone is still alive, and we have both of these players at low percent to stock. Let's see how they can... Ooh. Dash attacks, and actually the T-Jolts in general are, they were really working out for Joe in game one, and it feels like they're really working out again here now. I mean, why try to do too much? Why try and do anything at all against a character whose game plan revolves around like these hit and run guerrilla tactics? Like you don't need to worry about, you don't need to try and get max damage off of every combo in every matchup. Sometimes getting those single hits and extending your lead is all that you need, particularly with a character like Pikachu who can thrive so well off stage. Yeah, dash attack for dash attack. No need to no need to overthink things. Read at the corner, but Sonic Fiend not gonna fall for it. He's still down by quite a bit. 53% is all that's been dealt out on Joe Pone and yeah, the T-Jolts are coming out. He knows he has a lead, and those T-Jolts just put him in the exact position he wants him. 
62%. And this is considering how grindy this matchup can be. This is a huge, huge lead for uh, for Joe Pone here. One, a two. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold up, phone. <laughs> that didn't hit him, but I guess it did. <laughs> Game disagreed and everything's working out for Joe Pone in this second half, uh, or in this uh, latter stages of game three. I, re I respect okay. it, I respect so, it. So here's the thing. Um, normally, th th that's like a thing that you actually see people do a lot, where they'll get people in the jab lock and then they punish the roll in. Because a lot of the times, people will try and buffer their survival DI. And that means that they're pointing inwards towards the stage and they accidentally buffer a tech roll in. So you see a lot of Roy players, for instance, will like jab lock people and then run in and do charged F smash and you look super cool. But it's honestly, considering the fact that it's not quite an option select, but it is kind of taking account, you know, your opponent and what is going through their mind. But in that situation, Sonic V knew he wouldn't have died. So he had no reason to DI in. So he didn't get hit by that uh, mix up. But, you know, I, I was going to mention how Jopun's need to overextend. And I really do appreciate how uh, how Sonic Fiend decided to play the latter half of that game. It was playing against you, the idea that, you know, Jopun's just going to keep holding in and try to, like, oppress and overwhelm. You get that really hard punish on the down air. And that's, like, you're punishing these overextensions, even though you're at a deficit. And you can still play to Sonic strength. Unfortunately, uh, drop from Halo kill move is just a true combo. And if you're invincible, why not? <laughs> Good set. Good set.